name is Thomas Flippin, and I'm an American classical guitarist and composer based in New Haven, Connecticut. My music is informed by a lot of the musics that I grew up listening to. Even though my music is a little dicey and dissonant at times, it always is grounded in some sort of melody or cool rhythmic groove to keep you centered as a listener. And that's informed by, you know, me growing up listening to jazz and gospel at church with my parents, or, you know, falling in love with grunge music and punk rock music when I was in a band in high school. And, you know, I love Negro spirituals and folk music. So that's all in there in the story that I'm trying to tell. And so I just, I'm really excited to be part of this project with Ex Aquo. I love the vision that they had to, to launch this project. The classical guitar repertoire is pretty homogenous uh, in that we have European voices, we have South American voices, which is not common in the classical music world, uh, but is very common in the classical guitar world, but we really don't have uh, black American voices. Most of the composers that we commissioned to write for us were uh, non-guitarists. It was, from a lot of them, it was their first time writing for the guitar. Thomas Flippin is a fantastic guitarist. We're envisioning this stuff too. Oh yeah, that that you're killing that. That's awesome. Okay, got it. like really intense power, bass. Power chords. Power chords. Okay. Um, so when I got the piece, it was it was done. That was a that was a classical guitar piece with every little note uh, uh, written in there. And then when I uh, got to work with him, it was like a master class, and he could just talk about. Uh, expression. This should be huge. This should be roaring. This should. This should. You play this with the back side of your finger like a pick. You know, rip through this chord. Um, and it, it was awesome. I. Uh, I really enjoyed it. We need to kind of be the change we want to see in the classical music world, where. Um, as musicians and performers, we're also commissioning pieces that will add diversity to the repertoire so that a hundred years from now, people look back and they have this. This is composer and pianist Brian Raphael Neighbors, and I bring you greetings from Birmingham, Alabama, my hometown. I'm so excited to be able to write a new solo guitar work for Ex Aquo, as this is my first solo guitar work ever. I've written for the guitar and orchestra, but never as a standalone chamber piece, so this is an incredible opportunity to write for such an expressive instrument with so many wonderful expressive techniques and tones, and I cannot wait to employ my own composition compositional voice to it. So my compositional voice really is rooted in humanity and exploring different facets and stories and narratives behind humanity and behind existence and the presence of life and how it changes from day to day and how we perceive those changes. So I can't wait to explore this work and employ all those very fundamental ideals upon it through my compositional aesthetic. So I thank you Ex Aquo for making all of this possible and I cannot wait to produce a new stellar piece for you all. So Brian Nubbers, the composer that wrote the piece that I am performing and uh, and recorded hadn't ever written for solo classical guitar before so it was a super interesting process um, he wrote it in a really beautiful way very pianistic and we had such a great time collaborating we we chatted on many different occasions and uh, there is there's some things that I want to change some things that he wanted to change and demanded of me about really feeling each of those eighth notes at a full um, length and note value so that you can make whatever harmonics come out really speak. Okay, cool. 
But yeah, feel free to make that as separated still, but with every uh, note very grounded into the uh, the finger. founders of Exiquo, along with Phil and Evan, and we created this nonprofit to um, spread guitar music and um, build an audience. Um, back in about March 2020, right before the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's been less than two years. Exiquo has been an organization. In that time, we've uh, had a festival, and then it became a big online competition. And we thought it'd be an awesome idea to commission a few pieces for the guitar repertoire. Um, but then once we came upon this opportunity to apply for this Augustine Foundation grant, we thought, how awesome would it be if we could make this into a much bigger thing? My name is Jessica Mays and I'm a composer. I'm originally from Denver, Colorado, though I'm also based in New York City. So I grew up playing the piano. I'm a classically trained pianist. That said, I always had a, a hunger to explore many other different genres of music stylistically as both you know, a fan of music, a listener, but also as a composer and explorer of all sorts of different sounds and, and styles. My sound pulls from many different worlds. Um, I've had an interest in pop culture, but you know, also jazz, um, orchestral, the, the orchestra, contemporary classical music, the avant-garde, all of it. So of course, what I intake also becomes a part of my output naturally. So I have a, a healthy, but you know, diverse diet when it comes to um, what I listen to and what keeps those creative juices moving. I know a lot of people from XIQO uh, through Instagram, actually. Um, I think Evan was the first person I actually followed on Instagram, and I thought, wow, people actually post videos on here? This is crazy. <laughs> Jessica wrote a lot of, um, it, like in the first draft, she had asked me to do a lot of um, extended techniques because um, Jessica plays acoustic guitar, um, and she's self-taught and she kind of um, invented her own technique, her own ways of playing the guitar, which I think is really cool. And um, it was really fun to play um, what she wrote, like, um, how, like the things that she is comfortable playing on the guitar. My name is Nick Dunstan. I'm originally from New York City, but I am now based in Berlin. I would say that something that is a common denominator throughout my work is that I like to give a pretty high degree of interpretation and 
improvisation as part of the piece. I find that when I give up a little bit of control, when I rethink composition as a practice of creating an environment to improvise, I find that it gives my pieces a constant kind of breath of fresh air. I think that this project that Exa Quo is doing is great. To me, Ex Aiko is so special because I know all these guys. Well, with the exception of Nanai, I've known personally these guys. I played concerts with them, I lived in the same house, we've competed. So the way uh, Nick decided to uh, put his, his markings for the improvisatory sections are just one note and direction up or down, up or down. The rest is up to me. And you'll see like the recording on the CD is quite different from the one on the video. Uh, I will be following his instructions at times and at times I'm just gonna be going wild. So everyone in this project is pretty much friends. Uh, we've met each other on the competition circuits. I think I think that's about almost everyone here. Um, but others such as Han and Phil, we met out on uh, actually social media. One of the reasons we picked Austin, Texas as the place to film and record this visual album and documentary is that several of our members are living in Austin, but also it's a nice central location that everyone could go to. We thought we could get a big enough place and environment that everyone could be collaborating together and be there to support one another during the filming and recording process. We were doing everything all in one place. So the artists are living in the house that the video is happening in, that the audio is happening in. Yeah, we've got artists coming from New York, Florida, Arizona, Chicago, a bunch of different places. So it's, it's really cool to have everyone here in one central location finally together. Hi everybody, I'm Nayla Mbeko, and I'm a composer and pianist based in New York City. I was born and raised here. My compositional style infuses my training as a classical pianist with my interest in jazz. I'm really excited to work with Exequo. I'm excited to be working with such high caliber musicians on this new commission, and I look forward to it. Uh, working with Nyla was really great. Um, she is not a guitarist, um, but she has written, I think, one other piece for guitar. Throughout the whole editorial process, she was very receptive and open, and it made the whole thing like amazingly um, efficient and, and effective and I, I'm really happy with the end result, with, and I think, I, I think we've come up with a really playable uh, and enjoyable piece. So what made this premiere different than other premieres I've done is the fact that I'm doing it alongside some of my really good friends and colleagues. Th this is really special and I get to see all my friends, we're all doing the same thing, we're all going through the same experience. So there were two really difficult organizational problems. One was that we had no idea when things were going to be opening back up to where we would feel safe and comfortable inviting all the artists together to do this recording. 
the other really difficult organizational effort was just trying to plan all this long enough in advance to where it would actually be executed despite whether or not we would be awarded with this grant. Applying for grants is always like a really long process. You have to think about what you actually want to do and plan it as if it was happening before you ever know you'll receive any support from anyone. Uh, but so thankfully, the Augustine Foundation was on board. Hey everyone, my name is Mason Vines and I'm a composer and vocalist from Sugarland, Texas and I'm so excited about this new collaboration with Exequo. As a composer, I enjoy bringing listeners together by composing pieces that blend genres um, and aesthetics together. I'm also super excited about this collaboration because it's the first time I've actually written for solo classical guitar. I have composed for ensembles that use guitar or use guitar as accompaniment, but never in this type of way. So I've really been enjoying the process of, you know, finding out new techniques, especially as it relates to rhythm and harmony. So thank you for your support. Mason is a really kind and engaging person. She was super um, interesting and fun to work with. She has lots of like really good ideas and she notated the ideas really well. Um, so she was really a pleasure to work with. It has weird like bright qualities to it. And then you can kind of start um, getting faster around 85 maybe. It's the same concept of like those harmonics that are creeping up the hill and then they cascade down to that, um, you know, those arpeggios that you play. An opportunity popped up at the University of Texas at Austin for the Rainwater Innovation Grant. We thought, wow, how it's a way that we could expand this project uh, into something even bigger. Uh, one of the things that I'm really happy we got to do, or we got to facilitate, was the interaction between these composers and the school kids in the Austin School District. And what we had talked about and really decided as a group was that we could get one of these pieces that we had already commissioned arranged for guitar ensemble. And we created a really beautiful arrangement of one of our solo pieces, actually the piece that I um, recorded called Broomsticks by Mason Bynes. As a facilitator for this project, it was just important that we got representation in the schools. We thought, how cool would it be if we could have these black American composers who are writing pieces for us um, for Exciquo, speaking in the same schools that are nearby to the Austin area that we're going to be recording in. Representation matters so much with these kids because uh, a lot of times they don't see people that look like them in the classical world. There's no problem finding classical guitarists that looked like me when I was in a developmental stage. And I just think it, it's important to give these students the same opportunity. We were able to have Mason Bynes, the composer, uh, call in 
via Zoom because we're all using Zoom right now with the pandemic. You could see a lot of the students' mindsets were either, uh, there was a, one of a few things, either they were confused at what they do for a living, um, they really didn't know what a composer does in the first place, or they were really serious students and they wanted to be composers or musicians, but they hadn't ever talked to anyone that's made it. My name is Mel Fitzhugh, and I am a Boston area composer and multi-era multi-instrumentalist. I love to write music for historical instruments as well as play music from many time periods and countries. Although I compose for and perform on somewhat forgotten instruments like the vihuela, kirtel, or shruti, the guitar was actually my very first instrument. So I was quite excited about this commissioning project for an instrument which has been my lifelong companion, on which I performed so many types of music from so many eras. I am looking forward to hearing all of the pieces which Ex Aequo is commissioning as part of this project. Mel's piece is really beautiful and they used two treble clef, which is uh, really interesting. Well, basic just a uh, harmonic with uh, tremolo with uh, only left hand um, slur technical and I feel like uh, they really know how the guitar work. That was nice, nice. Um, that that descending like the da 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 it can be as slow as you like, you know, because I know you have to do a little prep to get to that <laughs> our artificial harmonic. They gave me a bunch of the uh, idea and just just really um, open it, just let me choose which one I feel com comfortable with. Hi, my name is Cecil Alexander. I'm a guitarist and composer from a small town in Michigan called Muskegon. I'm currently based in an even smaller town in Mississippi called Natchez. Um, I've been composing seriously since about 2012 when I was studying composition at uh, Berklee College of Music. My compositional style is rooted in Black American music and I'm very uh, passionate and serious about the preservation of concepts such as blues, folklore, groove, and swing and other defining elements of Black American music. I'm thrilled to have been selected um, by XA Quo for this commission. Uh, it's definitely a much needed push to get the creative juices flowing, especially given the circumstances of the pandemic and everything. But I'm really looking forward to see how everything turns out. So thank you. Cecil was uh, very easy. 
Uh, we just exchanged some emails and talked about the music. So meeting in the middle with uh, Cecil as uh, you know he, he, him as a as a composer and guitarist, but also a jazz guy, and me also a flamenco guy and a classical guy, kind of you know a, a, a mix uh, of sorts. I saw some of the things that he was going for uh, in the piece, uh, for example, with some of the harmonic sections and um, a lot of times try to recreate similar things as I'm going in other sections possibly. Um, so the, the harmonics and then uh, I, I also worked with the, just the tone of the guitar, you know, a lot of contrast between uh, you know, Sultasto and Ponticello, so a little sort of question-answer type of deal. I, um, I really felt like it all blended uh, really well. Yeah, so I got to be the uh, audio engineer and producer for the sessions here. And it was really great. Uh, it was so much fun to work with all these people who I'm friends with and I'm colleagues with and I've known for so long. So we came in, we had four days, four, five days to build a studio, basically create a, vi a video studio, and then deal with all the challenges that come with it. genesis of this piece was kind of interesting because uh, I, I, this is definitely something I was thinking about for a while. Uh, I really wanted to see what would happen if I tried to write something multi-rhythmic for guitar. Because at that point I had been writing for guitar for at least nine or ten years at that point. So I first wrote my first guitar piece in 2011. And you may have seen them. Those are the selected etudes. And I pretty much wrote one or two every year. And I guess that kind of came to a full circle with this piece, which is a, a mix of um, technical and lyrical, I would have to say. Quinn, uh, his first instrument is uh, percussion. So he's obviously way more adept at these rhythms than I am. And so first looking at the piece, that's the first thing that catches your eye is all these changing meters and these complex polyrhythms. I found the texture of this piece to be quite different than almost anything else I've ever played. Um, there's a lot of just stacked moving chords, um, very short melody runs. It, it sounded a lot like early guitar music to me. Quinn does have a great understanding of the guitar, so many of the things are possible just unusual and so it did take a little bit of um, practice to find out what was going to be important in these stacked chords and how to move the left hand. We are not just buying CDs anymore. The idea of a visual album I think is so important to the development of classical music um, we're on YouTube, we're, we're watching uh, highly produced videos, and I believe that the visual album is sort of the, the most interesting way to present a digital concert. Uh, Matthew Anderson put the team on his back for the whole visual album. Uh, he created storyboards for every single piece. Everybody had such different videos. Um, Matthew Anderson had a vision for each specific video. They're all so unique and they all capture the character of the pieces that we're playing. It's a dynamic, creative, colorful experience that I think really draws you in. This 
is really a time to, to you know, gather all these voices together and create something special and unique and something that sort of, you know, uh, changes the canon. joined so I would raise the standard bar of the whole group and I thought this was the duty of someone that it was something that only I could do and I alone <laughs> I've been having trouble my relationship with my father Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like a heat lamp. Do you want to answer about uh, Evan? Yeah. Um, I have a lot of gripes with him. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> I got a bone to pick. Yeah, got a bone to pick with that guy.